Hello everyone, um, today I'm looking at another one of Daniel Cordry's games and this game was played in 2015 at the <clears throat> South African Open and it is against a specific Johan Stradom who is just nearly a 2100 but I think we, after seeing this game we could think of him as a 2100 um, game from 2015 so they were referencing games that were played in 2014 we will see that in a second so what we have Cordry as black and Stradom as white. We have e4, c5, and c3. Now in the game, knight f6, e5, knight e5, d4, and c takes d4, um, takes and d6 was played. Now there's another way to reach this position, and that is from the uh, Mora Gambit. So when we have after c5, we have d4 d4, then c takes, c3, and knight f6, and you can see this is just a transposition of these systems. Now, I quite like what Stradom did in this case, it's quite because he got a Mora Gambit position, which usually is quite nice for white activity. Black is actually fine, and since we looked at the first game, we've got a lot of the same structure with this knight coming to b6. Um, so these seem to be positions that Cordry likes. So he's also quite happy with this position. So in the game, we, we reach this um, position here after d6. And then the move knight f3, all natural moves, knight c6, bishop c4. And now Quadri makes a very specific decision to take that pawn on e5. Uh, other ways to play this position have been to go knight b6 immediately. And then after bishop b5, Bishop d7, e takes d6 to go e6 of going after the pawn because there isn't really a natural defense for the pawn. And bishop g5, f6, and then to recapture that pawn. And this is being played by Carlson many times and um, specifically um, against uh, Russian players, he likes this. And then you've got this inclusion of this type of um, structure. So then d takes e5. But in the game, this is also main line, um, going d takes e5, and then after captures, he doesn't go for the most common move, which would be knight bd4. And this is quite an in-game variation, because um, if captures, captures, and it's quite equal for both sides, or if white just castles, uh, you've got queen takes d1, rook takes d1, bishop g4, both sides seem to be fine. So it was kind of Cordry's choice in this position to go for an in-game variation or not. He chose not to, so he went bishop e6. Um, also quite an interesting move, but it, it sets up Fianchetto in here. And the next few moves, it really feels like the players have prepped this line specifically, and they have. They have been playing accurate so far. Um, knight g5 going to double this pawn. Perfectly normal, bishop g7, not caring about that. And then we've got this specific doubled pawn structure. And f4, um, reinforcing this pawn, there isn't really a minor piece that will defend the pawn at the moment, so that's necessary. And queen b6 check, king h1, and Cordry plays computer recommendation, most common move here. This game has been played six times, by the way, rook d8. <clears throat> Obviously setting up a nice discovery, just reinforcing this part of the board. And it looks like after Cordry Castles, you'll have um, quite nice files to work with for his rooks. And looking from White's perspective to the position, it already feels a bit strange, though you have this as an, an asset. And correctly, um, straight on goes Queen G4 to attack this weak pawn. And a natural defense is Knight D4. There aren't really any pawns close by to knock out this knight. So it's a bit of an outburst for the knight. Um, knight a3, good um, developing move. Though he plays this probably because of preparation. It doesn't feel like he knew exactly what to do with this knight in the game. Okay, so Cordry castles naturally, and now Stratum plays a new move, and the game is a new game from here. He goes b3, perfectly fine move. In the past, rook b1 has been played to protect the pawn and to further development. But then the game reaches a specific character where pieces kind of need to be shuffled around. And 
the dynamic of the game is a bit um, strange. So it makes sense that he wants to go b3 just to reinforce the bishop. Okay, and we'll see what his ideas are. Um, Cordry goes queen b4, just exerting some pressure here, maybe even looking to enter with his queen and find new outbursts or ways to develop these two beautiful knights. And Strenum goes queen h3. It's a fine move. Um, to illustrate maybe what he was afraid of, because now he's covering the square on c3, so the queen won't really be entering. And he's also maybe afraid of knight f5 maneuvers. So he's clearing, he's vacating the square on g4 for pawn to go to g4. And we can maybe see that in the line. Instead of going queen h3, if he had gone h3, I'm just doing a, making a random move. Then the inclusion of queen c3 could be a bit tricky with these knights finding natural squares. Another, another thing queen h3 kind of does is it also just keeps pressure on this pawn. And tactically, things seem to work out when the queen remains on this diagonal. Okay, so now Audrey makes a very interesting move. And it's not really a computer recommendation. It's a bit of an inaccuracy, but for play, it makes a lot of sense. And after making this move, it really it provoked um, Johan into um, making a mistake. And that is sometimes what you need to do with over the board chess. Just do something a bit devious. Uh, see if you can find the move. Um, you might be able to, but it's, it's a pretty deep idea. So you can pause for a second. Okay, he goes bishop takes e5. Now the idea isn't that apparent because you might ask yourself, okay, well, what happens after f takes e5? Well, then. Um, yeah, so this is exactly what Yuan asked, what happens after f takes e5. And from a normal player's perspective, not that tactically alert, you might think, okay, well, um, there might be something here after rook takes, and bishop takes, and queen e1. That might have been the idea. But a simple move like bishop b2 just solves all the problems back rank, and now you're simply up a piece. So this wasn't Cordry's idea when playing bishop takes e5, and the response being f takes e5. So what was his idea after f takes e5? Maybe just take another moment to see if you can find it yourself. Okay, his idea was to go queen takes c4. Now what's the trouble with this position? This queen can't be captured at the moment by any one of these pieces. And simply taking with the rook back there just allows this rook to capture and your back rank threat is renewed as black, giving you that tempo you need to um, get this queen into safety and play up a piece. Now, this was, this was the deep idea Cordry had when he went bishop takes e5 in this position um, after after the move queen h3. So queen h3 was actually still a fine move, but after bishop takes e5, f takes e5 kind of loses the game um, because of queen takes c4. Now, what he could have tried for, for white, and maybe you can see if you can find this move yourself again, or pause again, <laughs> a lot of pauses in these videos, um, is the move knight b4. And this is really just a tricky move, but a great defensive resource. Uh, it kind of holds everything together, because after a move, let's say, like knight takes b5, now suddenly white is in the driver's seat. The idea of playing the knight b5 is obviously to get rid of the defender of the e6 square. This would have been a really tricky move for Cordy to deal with. He would have had to go on queen c5 just to start defending in the back. And even white might have been having initiative. Because going bishop g7, retreating, actually just allows white to develop quite naturally. And tactically, things seem to be in white's favor. Okay, so this would have this would have really been a strong move to find. But over the board chess, even the stuff like this could be really tricky. So after, after you went f takes e5, the game was over pretty quickly. Um, 
called you in queen takes c4, the beautiful move. And the idea of the bishop takes e5 was to play this. And unfortunately, no, Stratum threw away the game a bit more quickly than he needed to. Doing something like rook g1 just clears the back rank. And after the queen moves again, let's just say the queen moves back, then, okay, you might still have play. You're playing down a piece against an IM. Um, no, you're not playing down a piece. You're playing a bit of a weird position, but okay. Uh, this is still better for black in many respects because of f5 and stuff like this. So rook, rook g1 was also a move that maybe could have held on to stuff a bit longer. But after after he went rook takes f8 check, the rook took, and now you're still sitting with the same threat. Um, of rook f1 check mate and you still can't capture the screen so goes bishop e3 and this this was quite cute i think what he tried to do queen c3 and now his idea was to capture her and maybe see some trades and then bring the rook in but obviously cordy just went queen a a8 check takes a8, and now the bishop can't capture because of rook f1 checkmate, so bishop g1, rook f1, and I think um, white could have actually just resigned here, but the game went on a bit, king g7, h4, rook takes, and now there's a mate in 4, but quarter goes for a simple um, win, tactically he just goes rook takes g2 check, and here in this position you're on straight on resigned, just simply running away needs to check mate, capturing the rook leads to this queen fork. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the game.